Hi everyone and welcome back to Tech Reps. In this video, we are going to create a database for a small clinic that will store the patient's records. We will be using this ER diagram to create the database with the following tables and relationships. Before we get in and start writing the codes, let's understand the diagram first. We have the doctor table here, which will store information about the doctors at the clinic. And then the patient table will store information about the patients who visit the clinic. Now the appointment table here represents the interaction between the doctor and the patient. The relationship here are a patient can have none or more appointments and each appointment is attended by only one patient. And on the other side, a doctor attends to none or many appointments and each appointment is associated with only one doctor. So that is what is happening here. Now, this medicine table stores information about the medicines that are prescribed at the clinic. And the appointment medicine table will store the relationship between appointments and medicines. And this table is a linking table between the appointment and the medicine table because there is a many-to-many -many relationship between these tables. If you want to understand this linking table, I have a video where I explain the many-to-many -many relationship and how to break them down. I will leave the link in the description below. Now, let's write some actual SQL code. With our MySQL environment ready, open up your MySQL command line interface and let's get started. The first thing we need is a database to hold our tables. We will call it clinic. To create a database, we use the command create database and the name of the database, in this case, clinic. Terminate and enter. Remember to always bring the semicolon after every statement. You can actually write these commands in the workbench, if that is what you are using. Great, we've created our database. Now let's switch to our database using the following command. Use then the name of our database, which is clinic, and terminate. Enter. Now we get the message, database changed. It means that our database is now active. Now it's time to create our tables. The first table will be the doctor table. We can create the tables using the following SQL statement. Create table, then the name of the table, which is doctor, then open and close parenthesis. This tells my SQL that we are creating a new table called doctor. And we can't create a table without any column. So in the parenthesis, we specify the column names and their data types. If we look at the diagram, the doctor table has these four columns. So we start with doctor ID. The data type is int. And we give it a constraint of not now. This means this column cannot be empty. That is all for this column. So comma, enter. Then the next column is doctor name. Now this name is going to store characters. So the data type we'll use is var car. And the maximum characters it can hold is 255. And then we give it constraint of not now. Now the next column is doctor phone number. And that will also be var car data type because we are not going to use the phone number for calculation. So we'll make it a character data type and give it a not now constraint. Then the last column is doctor email which will also be character data type and also not null constraint now after the last column we now specify the primary key for the table so to specify the primary key we bring the keyword primary key then in the parenthesis we indicate the column that is the primary key and in this table the doctor id is the primary key so we'll put it inside and that is all. So we close the table parenthesis and terminate. Now enter. And that is it. Our doctor table is created. Now the next table we are going to create is the patient's table. The patient table is similar to the doctor table, but it stores information about patients instead of doctors. So we are going to use the same commands, create table, then we name it patient. Now we open parenthesis, then we specify the table columns. So the first column is patient ID and the data type is int. We give it a constraint of not now. Now here we are going to add another attribute, which is auto increment. What this means is that 
we want the database management system to assign the primary key to each patient we add to the table. This is because we are going to have a lot of patients in a day. So we don't want to worry ourselves assigning primary key to every patient. We want the database management system to do it automatically. So we add this attribute to this column. Then we go to the next column, which is patient name. That is going to be a character data type. We give it a constraint of not now. Then the next column, which is patient's phone number. Also a character type, not now. Patient email, character type, not now. Patient address, character data type, and not now. And the last attribute is date added. Now this is a date column. So the data type is going to be date. And that will also be not now. Now, after the last column, we specify the primary key for the table. So primary key and then patient ID. Close and close the table parentheses and terminate. And that is it. We've created the patient table. Now the next table we'll create is the appointment table. And this table has a relationship with the doctor table and patient table. So we are going to have foreign keys in this table. But before then, all other commands are still the same. So I'm going to fast forward this. Now, after the primary key, we now establish the foreign key relationship. And in this table, we have two foreign keys, the patient ID colon and the doctor ID colon. Now we are going to establish two different foreign key relationships. The first one will be the patient ID foreign key. So to do that, we say constraint, then we name the relationship. This naming is not compulsory, but it is most advisable to name your relationship because you will need them when you want to break these relationships. So by convention, most SQL developers name their foreign keys by fk underscore then the tables involved in this case the patient table underscore the appointment table then after that we bring the foreign key keyword so foreign key then we open parentheses and specify the colon in this table that is the foreign key and in our case is the patient id after that we now bring the keyword references then we indicate the table we are referencing to. And in this relationship, we are referencing to the patient table. So patient, then we indicate the colon in the patient table that we are linking to. And in that table is also the patient ID colon. Then we close it. Now the last attribute is we want to know if a patient is deleted. What should happen to the record in the appointment table? So we say on delete, it should cascade. It means that if a patient is deleted, all the appointments should also be deleted. And that is all. We have established the relationship between the patient table and the appointment table. So with the same format, we establish the relationship between the appointment table and the doctor table. So we bring a comma, then we say constraint then we name our foreign key. So we say fk underscore doctor underscore appointment. Then we bring the keyword foreign key. Then we specify the colon that is the foreign key in this table and is the doctor ID. After that, the keyword references and the table we are referencing, which is doctor table. Then we specify the colon in the doctor table that we are linking to. And in that table is the doctor ID column. Then in here too, we say on delete, it should cascade. Meaning if a doctor is deleted, then all the appointments of that doctor should also be deleted. Now, after this, we don't have anything again to add to the table. So we don't bring any comma. We only close the table, parenthesis, and terminate. Then enter. Then our appointment table is created with the relationship between the doctor table and the patient table also established. Now for the rest of the tables, it's going to be the same format. So let's create the medicine table. So create table medicine. 
Then we specify the columns and the data types. After that, we indicate the primary key, which is the medicine ID. Then close the parentheses and terminate. And that is it, we've created the medicine table. Now the last table is the appointment medicine table, which is the linking table between appointment and medicine. So create table, appointment, medicine, then we specify the columns. Now in this table, we have two columns making up the primary key. It means that we have a composite primary key. So what we will do is, in our primary key parentheses, we specify the two columns. So appointment ID, comma, medicine ID, and close. Now the same columns are also foreign keys to two different tables. So with the format we did earlier, we use that to create the foreign key relationship between these tables. And that is it. We've now created a database and the tables for the clinic using SQL in MySQL. In the next video, we are going to populate these tables with data. So if you don't want to miss that in the future videos, consider subscribing and turn on the notification bell so that you get notified when new videos are uploaded. I hope this video was helpful. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comment section. Thank you for watching and see you in the next video.